Welcome to Cat and Jess Talk the Best, where we're going to be talking about IMDb's top 250 movies from April 12th, 2018. My name is Cat. And I'm Jess. And today we're talking about number 223, Diabolique, um, or Le Diabolique in French. So pretty much the same thing. Um, the English translation for it is The Devils. And it is a crime drama horror film from 1955 has an 8.1 on 54,471 votes. It's like, this is also in black and white. Yes. And it's also in French. Yes, it is French and black and white. Yeah. Which, Wait. if we're going based on track record, I haven't really had a problem with black and white movies. No. And I haven't really had a problem with French movies. That's true. So based on that, I should like it. Well, based on that. Based on that. So, spoiler-free synopsis. In this classic of French suspense... The cruel and abusive headmaster of a boarding school, Michel de la Celle, becomes a target of a murder plot hatched by an unlikely duo, his meek wife, and the mistress his he brazenly flaunts. The woman brought together the women brought together by their mutual hatred for the man pull off the crime but become increasingly unhinged by a series of odd occurrences after de Celle's corpse mysteriously disappears all right so the director um is hg cluzo then the actors uh, we have simone signore no. uh, vera <laughs> cluzo who is married to the director and paul megris i apologize i don't know french very well mm-hmm. so apologies <laughs> All right. The average rating for this is an 8.6 on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, 95% liked it. So 42 total critical reviews. 40 fresh, 2 rotten. Two of the fresh, Bosley Crowther. This is one of the dandiest mystery films that has shown here in goodness knows when. My guess is he means French. In France, not in French. (laughs) Okay. James... Berendelli, uh, with a deliciously curvy and complex plot, Diabolique is a masterpiece of suspense as accomplished as anything done by Hitchcock. Yeah. That's a big compliment. That is, it really did remind me of like a Hitchcock film. It really did. Yeah. Um, so, Too Rotten, Variety Staff, although this has a few hallucinating bits of terror, this, the film is primarily a creaky door type of melodrama. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Because I was expecting, like, with that synopsis, because I read the synopsis before I had the chance to watch the movie, and with that, I was like, oh, it's going to be like this, and it, it wasn't quite what I was expecting. But that's okay. Derek Prouse, rarely, if ever, if ever, has such a wallow in the sickeningly macabre been past for distribution in this country. Don't know what Ouch. that means. Ouch. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> okay. Um, consensus. Cruel, dark, and undeniably effective. Diabolique is a suspense thriller as effective as Hitchcock's best work and with a brilliant twist ending. Yes. Agreed. No information on the money, just so everybody knows. Couldn't find anything. Nothing at all. All right. So awards. It won four awards. The Edgar Allan Poe Awards, Best Foreign Film. National Board of Reviews, Top Foreign Films. New York Film Critics Circle Awards, Best Foreign Film. And Prelude de Luc. It won that award. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That works. All right. So initial thoughts. Um, like I was saying, reading the synopsis, I thought once they did do the deed of killing the husband and got rid of the body or stashed the body, because to me it was a stash the body mm. when I read the synopsis, it seemed to me like it was going to be more of a supernatural like ghost type thing. And it wasn't quite what I was expecting it to be. 
it did really remind me of House on Haunted Hill quite a bit. Yeah, she did tell me that. With the whole murder plot <laughs> thing, that that reminded me of House on Haunted Hill. Um, it does remind me a lot of Hitchcock's movies. I don't think it's quite as good as Hitchcock, but it did remind me of it. it. Yeah. Um, I mean, the only thing that I can, like, really... It takes a few like a little bit away from it is it didn't really seem to me like a horror movie it's classified under horror but to me it wasn't i wouldn't really classify it too much as horror it's probably it's one of its like last ones categorized as, yeah it is yeah Prime, well they put it in alphabetical order but still <laughs> i would do yeah it's more like a crime drama thing more than horror like near the end i can see where it's horror but to me i if it was just labeled crime drama I'd be perfect. It'd be okay. But the, the fact that they thing. threw horror in there got me so excited. Of course. And then it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so that's... It's not as good as I thought it was going to be, seeing as how I thought it was going to be a crime drama horror. But it was just a crime drama. And I do love crime dramas. I don't have a problem with them. But the fact that they threw horror in there and didn't put it in there is what got me. <laughs> I liked it. It was very suspenseful. Um, again, it did, like Kat was saying, it did remind me of a lot of Hitchcock's films, mm -hmm. and I'm a big fan of his. Yes. Oh, I'm trying to think. It just, yeah, I really liked it. I After I watched it, I told Kat, I'm like, I'm going to watch this again. Yeah, she did say that. I want to watch this again when I have time. I don't know when that's going to be, but I want to watch this again, and I want to watch it actually with my older brother to see what he thinks of it, because I really trust his opinion, especially with, like, suspenseful, like, twist-ending kind of movies, so. Yeah. Definitely want to watch it again. Yeah, I would probably watch if I have time. That's the thing, is I don't have a lot of time, and I want to reserve watching movies to um, stuff I haven't seen that's on my list to see, but if I do get that urge to watch a French movie, which I do... Now that I've seen a few French movies, I do get an urge to watch French movies. Because the ones that we've watched so far, I've liked them. Um, so if I do get that urge, I will watch it again. But I'll watch it under the knowledge that it is a crime drama. Mm. Rather than a crime drama horror. Because I think that's just what got me. I think so. I was like, I, all the French films we've seen, I have not been disappointed. I was slightly disappointed. But that's just on the horror fact. But the suspense, the drama, the crime, I, the rest of it, I loved it. It's just that bit. <laughs> that I wanted it to be really badly it wasn't there so yeah <laughs> all right I think that's all we got for initial thoughts yeah okay Alright, that was your warning. If you haven't watched this film yet, then stop listening. You come back once you've watched it. So, we start off at like a boarding school. And there's some, there's people going about their day. There's a guy in a truck coming. He's got like produce. And yeah, it's a, a, like it confused, man. it confused me at first because it's an institution. I'm like, okay, what kind of institution is this going to be? Yeah. Because like, I didn't read any of the synopsis at all i just kind of went to it as blind i, I did the only I thing blind. i had was read the only thing i did was read the synopsis and then like do the awards and stuff but i went in blind <laughs> so i was like i don't know what's going on let's go into this yeah so i was like okay what kind of institution but then we, i figured it out <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a school my guess is it's like um it's like a boys' school. It is a boys' school. I think it's a religious boys' school. I don't know what the main religion is in France, but it's. I think it's one of those main religions in France, one of those schools. I Catholic, think so. Catholic it might be Catholic. Like I don't know a lot about religion in France. <laughs> I don't know a lot about uh, religion. I, mean, I was like, <laughs> Catholic's a pretty big one, so I mean, that's you hear a about good Catholics possibility. A lot. Yeah, I mean, kind of all around the world. But. Yeah. And then um, there's a candy man. He's, like, walking around with some candy or something. And then he rings a bell. Yeah, bell rings. And then there's two women talking about some man. And one of them says, well, your husband. And that's where, if you have read the synopsis, 
You're like, oh, it's these two. <laughs> they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, they're going to do this. Um, mm-hmm. They're talking about the husband, and one of them, she has sunglasses on. Yes. Because. Uh, she got a bruise. Yes. Bruise and, a, like, a little cut on her eyebrow. And the sunglasses are hiding them. And people keep asking her why she's wearing sunglasses, and she comes with all different excuses. But to the woman, the other woman that she's talking to, she shows them. She's like, your husband did this. It's like, because he came in late. Yeah. Then the two women are in the science room, and they're, like, looking at some chemicals or something. And to me, that's when I watched it, because I had read the synopsis, I knew what they were going to do. I'm like, oh, they're getting their poison ready. I was like, okay, they're up to something. (laughs) All right. I'm like, I like, okay, usually two women when they're plotting something and there's a man involved. I mean, (laughs) something (laughs) bad's going to happen. happen. Um, yeah. And the pitch. husband comes in. And yeah. His name is Michelle. Yes, Michelle. And um, his wife's name is Christina. Mm-hmm. He calls her Cree Cree. Yep. Yeah. But that's not how he says it. He says it very French. Yeah. But I'm not, not French. I was like, we're not French. <laughs> there, were, there was a lot of times in my notes I just wrote CC because it was easier. But I did write their names down. And then... I just wrote Madam. Called it good. Uh, <laughs> um, and then the mistress is Nicole. Yeah. And, um, the husband seems, like, they all speak French, but the wife, I think she is, is like, Spanish, because she speaks Spanish and French, and she's talking to a boy in Spanish part of the time. Not, like, a lot. There's just a few, at the beginning, when she's talking to one of the boys, she says something to him in Spanish. I didn't catch that, I guess. Oh. There is one little boy, I don't know. He has a Spanish-French name. Okay. Um, that makes sense, because France and Spain are right, next, yeah, to each other. right next to each other. So I think she is Spanish, or, like, right there on the border of Spain that and France. That would make sense. Um, because she also... D- and I think there's a possibility she is from Spain, too, because she, her husband says something about her being from a different country. So... Can we ride the border? Yeah. yeah. They're right next to each other. Yeah, they are. But then the other two are French for sure yeah it's like I, re- I was like writing like all, the entire time this man is talking I, I was hating him more and more <laughs> as he talked and I was like I wrote even my in my notes I said dude is a total dick yeah he is um, total so he he asked his wife why she's not outside because she's supposed to be watching recess and so she is heading outside because she gets mad at him <laughs> so she's heading outside and this kid is, like, drawing on the wall, and she scolds him and says, if you keep doing that, then you're not going to get your vacation. Because they're yeah, about to have holiday. Their, their three-day weekend, pretty much. And the husband sees it, and she punishes, or he punishes the kid, says, you heard her, you're not getting a holiday this weekend. And she's like, I didn't say that. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just hating, it's like, just that point, I'm like, nope. <laughs> Nope, yeah. I would, I would, yeah. I would be plotting, too. Yeah. Um, and then the women are talking again, and they're still contemplating and discussing their plan without really giving it away. You don't quite get it till a little bit later. Yeah. Um, then it's dinner time. And the fish. Yeah, the, the, ro- the, the two, rotten fish. The two-day-old fish. Yeah. Like, they had cooked it two days ago, and then they recooked it. Rotten like, fish. First of all, you shouldn't recook fish. <laughs> I'm like, it's Ryan, and I'm like, it, it seems like he was helping buy, like, the food and everything, and he's just being a cheap ass. Yeah. And just bought crap. Yeah. So. He seems to be a very cheap man, and she is the one in charge of the money, because it's her money. It is. Um. So, he's, like, forcing her to eat. Says, you need to eat that, and then, like, makes a scene, and he's like, swallow. Everyone's waiting on you to swallow it. Just swallow the food. It was like... This man is asking for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then there's a food fight, and all the kids get in trouble. Yeah, they do. I was like, well, I, I would see why they fight with the food, because it's crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, everyone leaves except for the husband and wife. Uh, Michelle and Christina are in the cafeteria area of the dining hall. Um, 
and you don't see it, you more hear it. He like pulls her over past a wall and you hear her scream. So he hurts her at some, like somehow hurts her, does something to her. Yeah, they're not very like nice really to each other yeah. at all. No. Like he pretty much would not want her around. No. And same thing for her. It's like yeah. they don't really like each other at all. You can see that clearly. Yeah. Um, so then it's nighttime and the husband is asleep and the wife, Christina, is getting all ready to, she's like sneaking away and she goes to meet, um, Nicole and they yes. leave together in the delivery truck that had brought, that, um, Michelle was driving to bring the food. Um, and we discover that Christina has a heart condition. She has a weak heart. Yes. And so they go off to N- Nijo, I think is the N I G O T. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it, the yeah. t- town name, but that's where Nicole lives. Um, she lives there, and they go there, and they're still contemplating. They're they're putting their plan into motion. So. Nicole leaves. She goes upstairs and hangs out with the tenants. Well, you have to make the call first. Oh yeah, she's she's there for the call. I'm confusing it a little bit with the uh, with the remake because at the remake she's not in there for the call. She's upstairs already. So yes, <clears throat> but not yet, <laughs> not yet. So um, she Nicole is telling Christina that she needs to make the call to pretty much lure the um, lure him over Michelle. here. And she calls him, saying that she wants a divorce. Yeah. And like, oh, yeah, it would be easy. Just yeah. a quick divorce, you know. And then he's like, well, I'm coming. And so he comes. Yeah. And she says she wants to keep the school. Like, she wants to keep the school, and she knows that he won't let her if they get divorced. So, but that's what she wants. She doesn't want to give him the school because she knows he'll sell it. Yes. Um... So then, um, Nicole goes upstairs with the tenants. She rents out her place to a couple, um, because she's not really there very often. She lives at the school when she's not on holiday. So the husband comes, and they have made up this concoction of whiskey and poison, pretty much. It seems like poison, yeah. But it's it's not really, I think it's more of like a sleeping pill. That's what I thought after a while. Like a sleeping something or another because it puts him to sleep it doesn't kill him yeah he's just asleep yeah um and then uh nicole comes back downstairs after he's asleep and just starts running a bath yeah (laughs) and they drag him to the bathtub and put him in the bathtub well before all of that because they were talking he's pretty much he pretty much just drives her because she's on the edge this whole yeah. entire time. She's like, doesn't but know he's if she like, wants to do it or not. he's saying that oh, the divorce ruined everything. That's her fault for all his problems. You know, putting everything on her because excuse he's my an language because he's an asshole. Excuse yes. my French. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the one time it's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. And he's saying, like, oh, she's with Nicole here. He's like, oh, you set Nicole against him and mm-hmm. everything. And he hits her and everything. And Yeah, and at that point, she's like, fine, just drink all just of this. Just drink whiskey. all of it. <laughs> then but they then drag him. to yeah. him being, he's in the bathtub and they drown him. And he, like, wakes up while they've got him in the bathtub, but he doesn't really put up a fight. He just kind of accepts it. Yeah, then, like, Nicole's like, oh, go get that bronze, that heavy bronze, like, statue. statue. It's like a lion or something. Yeah, it's something weird, and she puts it on top of him, makes sure he stays down. Yeah. Um, they cover him with, like, a tablecloth? Um, yeah, it's some kind of, like, weird tablecloth. Yeah, just to cover it, make sure he's, you know, yeah. drowns. And the the people upstairs are listening to basically Jeopardy. And he gets upset because he can't hear it (laughs) because of the bathtub. He's like, I'm going to complain. They, before, they put him in the bath, though. She gets his wallet 
or whatever, um, like his pocketbook, and takes the ticket out, like his return ticket mm -hmm. on the train, because he took the train there. Yeah. Um, they and burn it. They burn it so that they don't have evidence of him being there. Um, and the man upstairs mm -hmm. won't go to bed yet because he's waiting for them to drain the bathtub because it's going to be loud. Yeah. So then they, next day, they drain the bathtub. And the guy upstairs is mad. <laughs> yeah. He's like, really? <laughs> um, and then they put Michelle in a crate. In the crate they brought. A big old luggage, like. It's like a wicker Like a crate. big whisker. Yeah. Big wicker luggage basket. Maybe. Yeah. And they have the man upstairs help them take it outside. It was fun. I wrote down, because, like, his, ex like, his expression, with, like, his dead expression, it made me laugh. Yeah, he's just, I didn't even know how to describe it. Because it's, it's just, like, like, white. Yeah. With, like, the whites of his eyes. Yeah. It's it funny. did. It made me laugh. I was like, ha, that's yeah. a funny expression. So then they're on their way back, and they drive past this hitchhiker guy. And they stop at a gas station, and the guy follows them over to the gas station, and he's drunk. Mm hmm And he tries to get in the car. Nicole has gone off to pay for the gas, and um, Christina is still in the car, and he, like, tries to get in the car, and, like, tries to get in the back. <laughs> he's all drunk and just a yeah. mess. And the gas station attendant comes and uh, gets him out of the car and says, oh, he's not a harm to anybody. He's just drunk. He's just drunk. He's fine. <laughs> just, just, we'll just get him out. It's good. So then they return to the school, and it's like the middle of the night, and they have to call the groundskeeper to let him in, because there's only, like, you can only get in through the school by someone letting you in. Um, and they're, like, they park next to the pool, mm -hmm. and the pool is really muddy and dirty and gross, and so they throw the body into the pool. Yes. And... Then the next day, they um, Christina's like teaching her classes and keeps watching outside and seeing people next to the pool and freaking <laughs> out that people are going to find the body before they're ready for somebody to find it. Totally freaking out. She's like super paranoid. And um, the handyman's over there. He's like fishing newspaper or something out of the pool. And then at recess, the kids are playing and their ball goes into the pool. And, um, then they, Nicole and Christina are outside while the kids are at recess. And Christina says that, um, they need to go get a pole to get the, to get the ball, ball out. out. And so she throws her keys, but she, I think she purposefully she did throw, throw it purpose, yeah. into the pool. Yeah, she threw it into the pool. And so she's like, she gets one of the kids to go in to get her keys. Yeah. And they don't find the keys. He finds Michelle's lighter. Yeah. And then they have the pool emptied. And there's no body in the pool. No body. And, like... Christina flips out. She just, like, faints. <laughs> yeah. Um... Then it's when the weird stuff starts this happening. This is when it starts going getting weird. So, it's like, Nicole's like, oh, I search everywhere. But then there's, what comes is, like, from this dry cleaning place yeah. is his suit that he was wearing. Yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, he got thrown into a pool. It was, like, really dirty. You gotta have your suit dry cleaned. <laughs> I mean, priorities but, for a dead man. Uh, yeah. So, then they, they follow the lead of where did this suit come from. So, they go to the dry cleaner. And they're like, they ask about it and they said oh no there was a couple people but that suit they left this key and it's a key for a hotel right up the street yeah room nine yep so they take the hotel key and they go over there and they're outside talking nicole doesn't think they should go in christina thinks that she should go in <laughs> so she goes in. yeah she does go in um she goes upstairs mm. and um she's in the room and she's, like, looking around, and the bathroom door starts opening, and I got super excited. <laughs> but it's just the hand, the cleaning guy comes yeah. out. So she, but she was scared. Yeah, she freaked a little. And the, she asked the cleaner, 
like what's going on. She's a, he's never really here in the day, and the bed's always made, so I don't really know. <laughs> he's like I don't know, don't see him. Um, I guess he's somewhere else. Yep. Yeah, so they have. So he says, "Yeah, you gotta look for him somewhere else. Like he's not here." Um. So they're back at the school again, mm-hmm. and they're arguing about it, saying whose fault it is. Yeah. <laughs> Because they think that somebody's found the body. Or somebody's stolen it. And then they read the newspaper. And there's a body that matches his description naked at the side of the river. Yeah, in the river sign. And um, so Christina goes down to the police station and asks about the body. She says, I think this is my husband. And she's asked to describe him. And she's like, uh... She says the description that's in the paper. He's like... Yeah, that's the description in the paper. You gotta give me a bit more details here. <laughs> I was like, did he have this? Did he have this? Yeah. This? And all of that. And then you get your um, very early... Um, I don't really know what to call it. It's like the morgue showing where they show you the face of the body without showing you any of the damage that could have possibly happened. Yeah, and it's not him. Yeah. Um... And while she's talking, before she goes and looks at the body, while she's talking to the police officer, there's a guy sitting behind her just kind of listening. And you're like, there's something up with him. He knows something's going on. And so he follows her down to the morgue. Yeah. Um, and then he goes, he follows her outside and talks to her about it. And then he rides home with her. <laughs> And, like, asking her all kinds of questions. And then he's, like, starting to question everyone. And he says that he is a detective. And he says he can find him. Yeah. Because at this point, he thinks... She thinks he's missing. Her husband is missing. Yeah. So he's like, oh, I can find him. And so he's, like, asking the handyman questions. And asking some of the kids questions. And some of the other teachers... And, um, searching the school for, um, some clues. And then there's another, we're at recess again for the kids. And one of them broke a window with his slingshot. And he says that the principal punished him. Yeah, the headmaster. Yeah. With, uh, punishing him with a, it's like a slingshot. Yeah. Um, and so they're all, Christina's freaking out again. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like, that's not true. He's not here. It's yeah. like, I saw him. Little kid's like determined to say, I, I saw him. Yeah. He was here. And so they're outside still and they're getting a picture taken. Yeah. It's like the school picture or something. Mm-hmm. And they see Michelle in the picture in one of the windows. And they're, like, freaking out, and yeah. Nicole's like, I want to leave, and, Christine, and Christina's like, like mm, just, just, just go, go. Yeah. I'll stay, just go. So she leaves. And then Christina is sleeping, and the detective is in the room. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> I'm, like sitting there. I'm like, what a creeper. And he and like, says he found Michelle. And then... Christina admits that she killed him. That confesses everything. But he says you'll be acquitted in the morning. As he as the detective he detective is leaving and he says you'll be acquitted in the morning. Yeah. Meaning he knows more than she knows. Yes. Um That's the next bit. I wrote man creeping around. Yeah, so like in the other part of it looks like the other part of like Oh school. yeah, that's right. And, the and there's side. like, there's like, you see, she sees like this light turn on, and like there's like, it just keeps turning on and off, and she sees like this man just like walking, walking through the halls. That's right. And then um, letter, there's a letter. Um, she's writing. My guess is like an apology, or she's like writing something on a typewriter, or maybe she's reading something on a typewriter. I don't know. She's sitting on a typewriter. I wrote letter. I don't know why. So she hears a typewriter sound. Oh, okay. So she Maybe hears that's where it. I fell asleep. 
Probably. <laughs> so she hears the typewriter and she's like, and it's in his office. And so she slowly creeps over there and the door opens. Okay. And yeah. there's I missed the that hat. And a gloves there, and the name there's his name is typed over oh, and over right. on the typewriter. Cause and I she wrote... like flips shit and just like she's like I'm out, and okay. she like runs back. But I missed the bit of her hearing the typewriter. I I saw the letter. I just missed the bit of her hearing the typewriter. <laughs> I literally fell asleep for like two minutes. That was your two minutes. <laughs> that was my two minutes. Uh, then the lights go out. She's back. She's there back. She's back in their bedroom, and the yeah. lights have gone out. And they come back on, and Michelle is in the tub. Yes, he's in the tub, and he just like slowly like rises out of the tub, and like his eyes are white and everything. Yeah. She later like flips shit. She's and like, dies. and she like pretty much has a heart attack and over, dies. Yeah. And what he does, he takes like these like fake it's like covers off of his contacts. eyes. Like, very early contact. Takes him my, off his eyes, and he's fine. Yeah. Um, and then Nicole comes Nicole in. Nicole comes in, yep. She's and like, then, oh, yay, it's all done. She's like, oh, she's dead, yay. And then the detective comes in as they're getting ready to leave. And he's like, catch you, suckers. He's like, ha. <laughs> um, and then the school is closed. I mean, because why not? Yeah, I mean, you know, his mistress kind of dies. And... They don't want the school anyways. Yep. But they're getting arrested, so. And then Monet, the same kid who said he saw... The headmaster. The headmaster earlier, sees Christina as they're leaving. He goes, stand in the corner again. <laughs> yeah, it says he gave her his slingshot yeah. back. She gave him the, the slingshot back. Yeah. And then he, he thinks he's in trouble, so he goes, stand in the corner again, even though the school is closed. He's, he's like, I'm to- going, I'm going. <laughs> He's, He's funny. a cute kid. Yeah, that's the end. But at the very, very end, it talks to say no spoiling. Yeah, it says don't tell your friends what you saw here. So it's a very early no spoilers. It's yeah, <laughs> and that's that's it. Yeah, that's it. So music. Um, George Van Pars, 1902 to 1971. Um, he did the music for this. His music is also used in Moulin Rouge, Frida, and 24 Hour Party People. I know Moulin Rouge and Frida. Yeah, I think 24 Hour Party People just might have pulled some music from some of the other stuff that he's done because those three were all done after he passed away Mm -hmm. so they all just pulled music from stuff that he had done previously but that's what um his most famous movies are i suppose um and he has worked on 277 different films and tv shows damn so that's (laughs) how many credits his music is in that's a lot yeah that is a lot Mm mm-hmm I don't know. There wasn't really a lot of music to this, but... It was just in the beginning. Yeah. That's it. That's the only music there was. In. Yeah. That's it. There's no other music besides the very beginning. Yeah. And that just was the credits. The beginning credits, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I liked it. It was it was a good piece. A good little piece. I liked it. It was. I wrote down. It, was, it had some organ music to it and, like, mm-hmm. some creepy, creepy kids singing. Yeah. It was kind of weird, but I liked it. I always feel like kids singing in minor keys is just like the creepiest thing. But I love it so much. <laughs> I'm going to have to agree with that. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, that kind of reminds me of Coraline, too. Mm-hmm. That's what Coraline is. Yeah. Alright, so the comparison. There is a remake. It was remade in the U.S. in 1996. And I did get the chance to watch it. I didn't. Okay. Uh, it's very, very similar. Pretty much exactly the same. Um, There's still a mistress. Her name is actually Nicole. Uh, The wife's name is Mia. And the husband, they only refer to him as Mr... Whatever the hell his name is. Um, Mr. something. I don't remember. Um, Pretty much everything is the same. Uh, The detective is played by Kathy Bates, so it's a woman instead of a man. Um, 
they picture people. They're not there to just take the school picture. They're there to film like a commercial oh. to bring kids to the school. Um, and actually, one of the filmer film guys is J.J. Abrams. So that was cool. <laughs> nice uh, cameo there. Yeah. The kid, like the Mon- Mo- Monet kid, his, I guess, counterpart for this film, okay. for the remake, is actually the same, I'm pretty sure it's the same kid um, that plays uh, Robin Williams' younger in Jumanji. Really? Because he looks, he looks the same. I couldn't find him in there, but if you look up Jumanji and look up that kid, he, I think he's in it. I'll he looks it very similar. Either that or he's just a doppelganger. Um, the only real difference is the end. Um, the plot and all that's the same. He come, he crawls out of the um, tub and uh, is like tries to scare her to death, and she pretends. Was his name Eric? In, in the movie. I think so. They only really said his name. Nineteen ninety six. Yeah. Yep. It's it him. is him. Mm-hmm. I knew he looked familiar, and then when you when we were talking about Robin Williams earlier, I was like, "That's what it is." Like it's Jumanji, but yeah. Yeah. So same cool. Kid. I'm glad I recognized him. See, I can recognize people, and I can tell you what they're from, but I cannot tell you their names. Names are always <laughs> tricky. It's true. <laughs> so um, at the end, instead of Christina dying or Mia dying, same person, um, she like fakes it. She like her heart kind of gives out because she does the same thing in the beginning she's like getting ready to take a bath and um her heart starts having some issues she tries to take her pills she like falls on the floor and her husband's just standing there looking at her um and one of the kids comes and runs and tells the teachers but then at the end she kind of does the same exact thing when he crawls out of the tub but she's not really dead and so nicole and um, her husband are like standing there looking at her like oh she's dead and they reach down to like check her pulse and she wakes up <laughs> and then there's this big huge fight and they all go outside and Nicole is like defending uh, Mia and they're fighting the husband and she hits him in the head with a rake and his head like starts bleeding the effects at this part are pr- it's just like a ton of blood coming down. And I'm like, oh, fun. Ah, okay. Like, you don't really see the in- imprint of where... So it was just a lot of blood. Yeah, it's just really a lot of blood. Um, and then they fall in the pool, and Mia and Nicole drown him. For real this time. And then the, t- the detective comes up. The detective that's played by Kathy Bates comes up and is like... She says she's seen the whole thing. And she says... Quick, you need to call an ambulance. Like, you need to pretend like this actually was an accident. Which, I mean, eh. Yeah. But it's really, it's very similar. Um, I don't really think that changing the ending affected it that much. It's more of just an English version of it. Oh. English modern ish version. Yeah, it's I mean, very similar. Like, the time difference is what, like, 40 years? Yeah. And the remake's only ten minutes shorter. Oh, um, time wise. No, it actually is pretty much exactly the same. So a decent remake. Yeah. Okay. Like the only thing that I didn't really like was how they actually killed him. Whereas in the in the original they didn't actually kill him. The wife ended up dying. But I mean, remake's got to be different somehow, right? A little bit, yeah. And they throw a little bit. It's rated R, so they throw a little bit more um, sexual innuendos in there, as well as you see him trying to rape his wife, because at that point she doesn't want to do it. But it's like, it's very short, it's like maybe a 30 second thing. Okay. You don't really see the whole thing, you just see him starting to do it, and then right after that you see him and Nicole having sex. Oh. But it's really, there's not a lot of differences. I feel like you might actually like this remake, but okay. I'm not 100 percent sure. It's not going to be. You're not going to like it as much as this. Probably not. But it's very similar. It's I'm not sure. one of those remakes where I'm like, oh my god, what did I just watch? My eyes are bleeding. 
Isn't that like the one you did with the... Uh... House on Haunted Hill? Yeah, there we go. I, I hated that <laughs> remake. <laughs> but yeah, that remake... Because most remakes kind of suck. But this one was actually pretty pretty similar. Okay, good. Because like, I'm always like hesitant with remakes. I mean, because... Yeah, they're not always great. Yeah, they just... They literally remade the movie. And then changed that. the ending a little bit. And threw a little bit more adult stuff into it. So, yeah. But yeah. So, trivia. Okay. Sorry, I'm tired. Yeah. Alright, so, uh, the director, he actually bought the film rights hours before Hitchcock could. Oh. It was literally hours before he beat him to it. Dang. He was hours. So, this could have been a Hitchcock film. It really could have. But you can see the similarities there. So yeah, so this he's I can you almost compared to me. You get like a French Hitchcock if you want to think about it that way. I have to see some more of his films before I call him the French Hitchcock. <laughs> Just for now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's a, based on a novel. Oh, I really? don't even want to try the French at this point. Oh, it's probably in French. Dang, I was going to read it. <laughs> it's a hard. I don't even want to try it. But translated loosely is she who was no more. Okay, and then again, it's an early example of a film featuring disclaimer saying, don't tell anybody. Yeah. It's even on the posters and like the like the taglines for it saying, enjoy it, just don't tell anybody about it. Yeah. And uh, this is kind of a creepy one. Kind of weird. So, the actress who played Christina, mm-hmm. she actually suffered a fatal heart attack five years after this was made. Wow. That's Which is just creepy. like her character yeah, in the movie. Like, yeah. It's kind of creepy. Just a bit. I was like, oh, okay then. That That's that's kind of weird. Yeah, that is kind of weird. All yeah, right. there wasn't too much trivia for this one. Right. Those are the most interesting ones I found. Those are pretty interesting. So, where it has been on the list before, in 2010 it was number 183. In 2012 it was not on the list. 2014, it was number 178. 2016, it was number 223. And it is number 224 as of the day we are recording. Um, Previously at number 223, the 2010 list, The Celebration from 1998. The 2012 and 2014 list were Monsters, Inc., which is our next film. Yay! Uh, 2016, like I said, was uh, Diabolique. And then, as of today, when we were recording, our previous film... Donnie. Donnie Darko. Oh, so Donnie moved up. Yep, just a little bit. Just one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, favorite line. I have a few. Um, one of these... This one kind of... I forgot, like, the whole thing, but it's, like, their teachers, and they're talking about the holiday. And it says, we need holidays to cleanse. <laughs> and that spoke to me such on a spiritual level as a teacher. I need weekends to I cleanse. was like, I know how this is. And it's like, Thanksgiving break is coming, you know? Yeah. It's like, I love my Thanksgiving breaks. So, I love those breaks. Um, let's see... When Christina said that pretty things aren't for invalids, that just kind of stuck with me. Um, Nicole, I have two from Nicole, um, talking about, and says how um, Michelle's acting towards Christina. She's like, it's revolting, and I'm not referring to the fish. Oh, I thought she said some things are hard to swallow. I'm not talking about the fish. Well, we probably watch different versions. Oh, Subtitles. Yeah. And then my last one is, if you don't get him, he'll get you. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my fish one was, some things are hard to swallow. I'm not talking about the fish. Yeah. Um, it's probably, yeah, just different translations. Probably. Um, my only regret is that he will never know I killed him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Stop looking at me with your insane eyes. It's a good one. I like um, it. Does a corpse that disappears seem natural to you? <laughs> That's it. I like the regret one. 
My only regret is that he will never know I killed him. Yeah. Okay. I like it. That one I like. So our rating, what'd you think? I gave it an eight. An eight? Yes. Mostly because I enjoyed it quite... I enjoyed it so much. I really did. I was rooting for them to kill him. <laughs> I was. I was like... See, then you'd if, be satisfied with the remake because they actually kill him. I would be very satisfied. Is he that much of a dick, too, in the other one? He seems to be a lot worse. He beats He's them even a lot worse. more. Yeah. Oh, then I would definitely like that. I'm like, yeah. I was rude. I was like, come on, kill the man already. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I would have killed him already. Not plotting this stuff out. I would just went. But <laughs> that's me. And after I talked to the cat after watching this and how it, it reminded me of House. She said it reminded her of House and Haunted Hill. I'm like, uh. that makes sense to me. Yeah, she thought I was being sarcastic. I was. I, I was like, what the hell? Well, no, I was like, because I said, well, that's good that you like, or something like that. It's like, and good like, for you. And I'm yeah. like, I wasn't trying, it's hard to text and not be sarcastic. I try to re- phrase it correctly. <laughs> and I guess I didn't. And I was like, no, I'm not being sarcastic. Like, I'm like, I'm, pr- I was pretty sure that you were going to like this movie. <laughs> like yeah <laughs> it, it does remind me of house and haunted hill it does and also alfred hitchcock so yeah definitely bonus points there for that what do you think cat um What's yours i gave it a six okay because i didn't think it was bad uh i was slightly i was disappointed that it wasn't to me a horror film uh i was because when i read that it was a crime drama horror i was like oh perfect i love those three and them as a combination is going to be a great movie. Yeah. Um, I didn't have a problem with it being French. Didn't have a problem with it being black and white. Because no, I don't either. All of them that we've watched so far that were black and white and French, I liked them. So, um, big points off for it not being horror. Um, and then there, I was starting to fall asleep a little bit. Just because it kind of stretched it out in the middle a little bit longer than I think it should have. But other than that. I can see that. I, I did like it. Like, it's it's not horrible. No. So, But, yeah. I'm giving it a six. Okay. So, our next film is Monsters, Inc. from 2001. Yay, Monsters, Inc. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, so we do have premium. So, if you pay for premium, you will get uncut episodes... Which you hear me just go on and on about stuff when I should be talking about a movie. (laughs) Um, Also, early release episodes. A lot of times I try to get them out on Mondays, but sometimes I get busy and they come out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But they will be early. Um, And then a special monthly episode every month. Um, September was one of my least favorite movies, Frozen. October is... One actor or director that we each liked from the list from previous movies that we've already watched. I picked Viola Davis. And I picked Robin Williams. So that's our um, October special episode. And then our November one is um, we are ranking the first 25 films that we've already watched in order of how we liked them. So Jess will have a list and I'll have a list. And we'll probably just... Read it. Read it. Give a little description of like why we liked that one better than the previous one and then um so you can get all of that for a dollar a month and if you pay five dollars a month you'll get all of that plus pick a movie of your choice um every 50 movies so that's a total of up to five movies that you could join us in talking about and we are still running a contest um, one out of every person that leaves a positive written review will be randomly selected to join for a movie of their choice. So, I check that about once a week. So far, we still only have the one review, which is fine. But reviews do help us, so. <laughs> so, please do them. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> uh, and where to find us? So, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Cat and Jess Talk the Best. Our email is Cat and Jess Talk the Best 250 at Gmail. Our website is Cat and Jess Talk the Best dot Podbean dot com. And the podcast is pretty much everywhere at this point. 
So just share it with your friends. They can find it iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Share the link uh, wherever you listen. Share it on Facebook or Twitter so we can get some more people listening. And our opening music, any music that we have, is by Audio Binger. And you can find him on Facebook, YouTube, and his website, audiobinger.net. We'll see you next time for Monsters, Inc. Bye. Bye.